Hey guys, I'm Matt, that's me, behind the giant hot dog, but more about that later. This is a story about six of us that went on a cruise, our very first cruise. When we set off, we had no idea what to expect, and I think it showed. So, what's different about this cruise than all the others? Well, we decided to document it all. We got permission from Carnival to record and live stream the entire trip, and I got my friend Zach to be the cameraman and come along with us. Oh, we may have also mentioned it once or twice on Facebook. Anyway, this is our cruise story as we lived it for seven days on the Carnival Magic. Finally arrived at Belize. Wait, stop, this is not the beginning. Our day started so much differently. Let's take a step back and go to the beginning again. Well, a very good morning. I said a good morning. Come on and good. So look what I found. Come on. I actually walked it out and he's in the <laughs> closet. I'm like, Spencer, they have beds. It's okay. <laughs> you you first, don't though. need to sleep in the closet. <laughs> <laughs> but the brand ambassador himself commented on your bed. No, I did not. John Harold is like the tippy top of social media no, on I Carnival, and he has even commented about your bed. No, I didn't know about that. He wondered if the cabin steward was lost under the wow. under the bed. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, I'm a little, I'm a little embarrassed now. Um, but I'll just be honest with you. Before I got on the cruise, my bed was never as popular as it is now. Um, but well, wait, wait, still. that makes me sound really bad. Right, no, all of you should <laughs> sound this bad. All of you are so worried about my bed, but obviously it's, it's not my bed. any attention whatsoever. I still have my little <laughs> dust thing. <laughs> <laughs> I know, the dust cover is still on it. Let's talk about yesterday, which was Wednesday. Tuesday. Hmm? Tuesday. So yesterday we went to Mahogany Bay, which is in Eastern Rotan in Honduras, in Mahogany Bay. Yeah, it has a lot of names. Anyway, uh, we got up pretty early to leave at like 9.30. We got breakfast with Zach and Jeff. Went to the island, got a couple of videos, walked on the nature trail, but not too much to do there really. Unless you want to take a taxi ride to like inner city area, but we didn't have a lot of money to be able to do that, so we didn't do that. Shocker. A lot of rainforest and stuff there, yeah. like famous for their monkeys and whatnot. Tons of rainforest, monkeys, but you have to take a taxi cab, and that's like 20 bucks a ride each way. And, you know, I don't know. We didn't do too much there. We After we were there walking around for a couple hours, we went back, we took a nap, watched cartoons, relaxed for a bit. Then we uh, got a little bit to drink, uh, watched the magician show, and just kind of walked around the ship and just met new people. Got more interviews, got some food, got some drinks, and yeah, I mean, Mahogany Bay was neat, but so far it's not my favorite one to go to. I definitely think Mexico is more interesting, just because there's a lot more shops, more activities, it's definitely all touristy area. And I'm not big into like tourist areas, I want to go meet locals and do stuff like that. That's pretty much our day yesterday. Okay guys, I'll see you later. After a hard wake up call, we sluggishly walked onto the tender boat that would take us to the mainland. The trip was bumpy, bright, and wet. Not the best for napping. Once we got off the tender boat, then we had to stand and wait for about 45 minutes before boarding a two hour bus ride to the middle of the jungle. Our tour guide, Carlos, was very pleasant in answering any of the questions uh, that we, we had. These were sailors, they were shipwrecked. Uh, eventually, they start practicing piracy. They would rob the Spaniard ships as they were passing through this area. In fact, if you recall, uh, getting on the tender that uh, bring you to the tourism village, if you look around the ocean, you're going to notice that there's a lot of drowned keys or mangrove island where these uh, settlers, where these free settlers could easily hide their ship. Hey guys, so we are in wonderful Belize today. We are about to go on a cave tubing adventure. So who are you and what can you tell us about this? 
Well, I'm Carlos, I'll be your tour guide for today and we'll be having fun today in the beautiful cave systems in Belize today. We'll be tubing under the cave system with some tubes today and we'll be ready to have an unbelievable day here today with you guys in Belize after the day. Awesome. Yes. So what's the water temperature like? The water temperature is refreshing for you guys as you see Belize. Belize temperature is, we only have two seasons, hot and dry. Mm -hmm. So what we refer to those beautiful waters, refreshing. Nice. How many people do you usually have in a day to go through the tubes? Well, today will be a busy day, so we'll be having, expecting to have a few thousand people today. Wow. wow. Yes. How long are the each caves? Uh, the cave will be approximately 45 minutes to one hour tubing inside the cave system only. Okay. Is it all dark? Do you have lights or? Uh, we'll be using, as you see, we'll be having a helmet, light okay, vest. Nice. Yes. And we'll be under the dark. 100% and we'll be ready to have a 100% wet tour today. Awesome. Nice. And we're also having lunch with you guys later today, right? After we finish our adventure, we'll be having the delicious traditional dish that it is called the rice and beans, the national dish of Belize. Nice. Well, you do taste like chicken. <laughs> okay guys, well we're about to go on a wonderful adventure. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, stay tuned, get notifications and updates. We'll all see you guys later. Bye. We reached our destination in the middle of the jungle, where we had to get the most important item for our journey. Booties! Which were super flexible and somewhat fashionable. We slipped them on and continued our trek through the jungle. We crossed a flowing river, hiked up mountainous terrain until we finally reached the mouth of the cave. What can go wrong? Make sure you have garlic on you. I've never seen any I can't think of a thing. Don't feed the badger! Don't open your mouth! Stop looking at them! <laughs> Don't expose your Whoa. neck too much either. Mm. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> oh, I didn't even take a bumper car. Mm. I thought we were tubing that bumper tube. Way cooler. Yeah. We seem to have reached the dam. Here's the curry. Oh, it's like that family guy thing where they have to like break up all the. Zach, get me a rock. There, too much fried chicken? Oh. <laughs> Kentucky fried chicken. No, it's too much Taco Bell. We didn't have that here. <laughs> too much food on the ship. Uh, well, uh, this is a scenic route. You gotta pay extra. That's just, you know, the lowest one. Yeah, we just also went to put our butts down. Nah, it's a surprise. You'll know when to race. Wow, buddy's like... Oh, yeah. So is everyone familiar with what Zika virus is? Good. So you need to find a pattern and slap yourself in it repeatedly and make sure you cover the entire... Stalagmites, stalactites. It's fresh, don't worry. What? Stalactites. Stalagmites, bottom. Ooh, that was a big thing. Oh, oh, yes. Nice. Well, guys, welcome to the underworld. Sweet. Yeah, you know. I knew I was in this hell. This place is called hell. I could have told yes. you that from my roommates. This place is called hell. In other words, Shibalba. Okay. Welcome oh, to yeah. Shibalba. Shibalba means hell. Isn't that the, uh, the Mayan? That's for the Mayan culture. What? And they would Is offer that? them gold and other ones and blood sacrifices mm -hmm. to yeah. Shibalba. I will not. I will be a tour guide today. They didn't basically live here. The Mayan culture did use the cave system for offerings to their gods, especially the rain god. For the archaeologists and scientists around 900 AD, there was an extensive hand wow. and that's where the, the Mayan culture would enter hell. Mm. In the Mayan mythology, they believed that their world was flat. Supported mm -hmm. by four, four uh, deities known as Bacaps that hold the, each corner of the art. In the center, it was a secret Seba tree. Uh, we call it uh, the tree of life. Mm -hmm. They believe in the Mayan mythology, they believe in the, in the skies, the branches called the skies, trunk planted on earth, root descent to the underworld. Mm -hmm. So this culture will enter places of fright like hell or Shibaba, where we are right now, 
and get the drip of waters from the stalactites. They believed it was a gift from the mm. gods, from the heavens. But nobody would enter this place of pride as it would be the entrance to hell. Hmm. Yeah. So it's the water it's formed when you a calcium prolex in the droplets. The rituals? Yeah. For example, bloodletting rituals would be performed here by the high class. Mm -hmm. For example, in time of drought around 900 AD. Kings and queens. Actually, what they would be doing is uh, that uh, the king, the queen, mm -hmm. the queen would pierce her cheek, oh, and her the, tongue. They would use the thorns, right? Or nipple. Mm. Collect the blood in a bowl, incense, uh, put incense of copal, burn it to the rain god. The king would pierce his penis yep. with stingray spine. Mm. This is why documentaries help. Documentaries, they're all great. So stalactites form. Hey guys, so we are now in Belize. We just finished our cave exploration tour and it was about 45 minutes long or so. It was absolutely amazing. There were so many stalactites, which are the drippings from the ceiling down. You can see several over here. And then stalagmites are when they come up from the ground from when the droplets hit the ground. Breathtaking. I mean, definitely check out the videos we took in there. Uh, I had my GoPro on us. Jeff, what did you think about the cave? It was very dark what? and mysterious. It was a, very dark and mysterious. I'm wondering, they didn't really see much bats in there like they said there would. Very beautiful. Um, it was def definitely super relaxing. My headlight went out when I got in there, but like it didn't really matter. Like there's plenty of natural light in there coming in here and there, but like plenty of mystery for sure. Um, the water was beautiful. It was amazing. Um, minus the fact you want to walk to go to the cave, that a nature was kind of nice since we saw uh, we saw this uh, we saw a gardener stick, we saw a um, mahogany tree, we saw all the other stuff. But when we actually got into the water, into the cave, the limestone, the, uh, the ceiling, like was a, was a great experience for uh, for me because I can actually relax and enjoy myself. And if you guys can look out there, we're actually seeing some bats flying in and out at the moment. So there are your bats, Jeff. Okay guys, we have to go. How cold was it? Uh, it was really nice and refreshing after walking around the heat. At yep. first, it was a little bit of a shock. Like, ooh, it's, you know, chilly. Yeah. Like 15, 15, 60 maybe? So about 60 uh, I would say about 50. Yeah. About 68. 68? 68? Yeah. Wow. It was pretty warm. It's like clear yes, water nice. beach. Mm. Definitely worth it. I would definitely do this again. Our tour guide was fantastic. We got a lot of cool videos. We got a lot of really nice information. I love learning, so this is great. Amazing. Okay, guys, we just finished. Uh, we're about to go grab some food, so we'll see you later. See Bye, you guys. guys later. The cave was too dark to be able to use the rest of the footage. This was my favorite experience, though. Not only did we learn about the history of the island, go through an amazing cave, but lunch was also included. On the menu was the most popular local dish, beans and rice. Not to be confused with rice and beans. Two completely different dishes. It was awesome. I learned so much cool stuff from Carlos. I was walking with him mainly at the <clears throat> front of the line and when we were in there and most of the stuff I already knew from uh, watching a lot of documentaries and I really felt like I was on like a National Geographic tour and it was awesome. I, yeah, it was amazing. I don't know, I think my favorite part was the end when we actually got to swim around. I'm like, oh yeah, that's fine, it's just a little bit and then boom, I went under like a good three feet. We then took a bus back to the city and explored outside the tourist traps. Hey guys, so I'm gonna try cashew wine for the first time. I have never had it, I've never even heard of it. It smells very, um, I don't know how to describe it, like almost like amaretto in a way. Wow, that was really sweet. It was almost like a hard cider. That was cashews. <laughs> That's really, really good. Thank you. It has a very nutty aftertaste. Like in the beginning, it tastes almost like amaretto and apple juice, and then it has a very almond uh, nutty flavor afterward. Definitely would recommend it. Walking around Belize was eye opening. The bus ride to and from the jungle passed by so many towns which were all impoverished. Even the upper class here would only be considered lower middle in the States. However, the people still had a smile on their face. They still woke up each morning to do their jobs and feed their families. The sense of community was very strong. This is a very humbling experience to come from a city-sized ship 
down to a building that costs less than one cruise ticket. Oh, nice. Um, thank you, Britain. And it's two dollars to the American dollar. Like, like, two, um, so, two Belizeans. One US is two Belizeans. For this adventure, we wanted to escape the tourist areas and see what the islands were really like. We walked through the tourist areas where many of the locals were really pushing on their merchandise on us. One woman in particular really wanted to braid the camera guy's hair. Once we left this area, we had to go over a small bridge which separated the tourist area from the real city of Belize. Walking around this part of town was completely different. The locals didn't hassle us to buy items, they mainly just stared. Not an unwelcoming sir, just more out of place. I assume most tourists don't wander around here much. There are five of us, so yeah. The shops were all caged up and secured, even the ones that were only selling smaller items like soda. Jason decided to buy a soda at one of the shops. There is a small opening in the cage where you have to pass the money through, and the shopkeep gets the item and pushes it back through the same hole. It was a dramatic change from any convenience store in the U.S. and a huge difference from the luxury of the cruise ship. Yeah. No. And you're all burnt. After this, Those you're going to be like, that. There's like two major things. Nah. You're like a lobster. Well, it kind of makes sense because they are actual name brand ones, so... I want you here too. Belize had many shops, but most of them had items you can get back in the US for about the same price. I really wanted something authentic from Belize, and I think I found just that while walking back to the ship. We walked into a small store that would appear to be a grocery store. Yeah, that works. Looking around, I laid eyes on some hot sauce. I love hot sauce. And it was one of Belize's most sought out souvenir to have. I inquired about the price and it was only 1.5 Belizean, which is about 75 cents US. I bought one mild and one comatose heat level. That said, not to use as a prank on others. This is going to be something glorious to try later on. Thank you. Once we left the local area, we headed back to the ships. We were sadly joined by a grifter who was insisting we look at all of his stores. He followed us until we got closer to the ship. Again, day and night differences from when we went to the local areas versus coming back to the tourist spots. Then, back to the carnival magic where our every desire was met and the luxury of our floating resort. My desire right now was for more alcohol. Yeah, very good day. Hot day, but good day. I like to, I like the caves. I like actually looking through the Belize city itself. Um, I got two sodas for under two bucks. It was actually quite a good deal. So, what did you think about walking around Belize? What's on that? Uh, a lot of people trying to ask you to buy things or things that you shouldn't buy and, like, on a daily basis, but those kept on coming around to us. And I feel like if we say no, it means no, but for them, they want to come back, oh, grab them again. So like, they, tr they try to push hard. That once you got out of the tourist area, it's more... It's very low. quiet, um, but it's more, you can see the buildings are like, actually family homes. It's actually more of a family kind of area, but I felt like walking through it, nobody was actually asking us for anything or doing something yeah. like that. So it was actually nice. Since the magic is too big to dock itself, we have to take a tender boat back to the ship. A tender boat is a smaller vessel that takes guests from land to the ship, which is docked about a mile offshore. I wonder how Spencer's day in Belize went. That, however, is for the next episode.